the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires know, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, healed the sick and restored them to wholeness of life. Look with compassion on the anguish of the world, and by your power make whole all peoples and nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the purchased places, at the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall, it shall not fear when the heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else, it is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. The Lord be with you. 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out of him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus is, in Luke's account, on a level place. In Matthew, he's on a high place. They remember it differently. They heard it told differently. It doesn't matter. The words are the same as in Matthew's Gospel, substantially the same as Jesus delivers what we know as the Beatitudes, the blessings. Blessed are you who are poor. Blessed are you who are hungry. Blessed are you who weep. Blessed are you when people hate you. And I love this. Rejoice and jump for joy. Yes, people hate me. How wonderful. What an odd teaching this is. What an odd thing. Blessed, makarios, can also be translated happy. Happy are you when you're sad. Okay. Happy are you when people hate you. Happy are you when you're poor. Happy are you when you're hungry. Tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day. And we're going to be very wrapped up on that day in um, who has our heart. And I remember when I was a kid in school and you'd get the little chalky candies, those little hearts, and they would have little messages on them. And be mine was, was probably the most popular. Be mine. There are a lot of Valentines that we get from the world. A lot of things say to us, be mine. Our bank account says, be mine. Serve me. Make your focus building me as big as you can. Make your focus be to, to gather as much money as you can. Be mine. And sometimes we do. We're servants to our bank account, service to, servants to wealth. And all our life becomes about building up more of it. Or maybe the call on us is to power, influence, control. Be mine, says power. Be in my service. Do those things which will earn my regard so that you might be powerful. And we know of people, and sometimes we do it ourselves, that fall into seeking control and power and do all sorts of things to serve that. Be mine, says food. That's one that whispers to me very often, usually after the boys are in bed and, you know, Amy has bought a six-pack of muffins and there's five people in our family, so there's always a muffin left. And, that muffin talks once the boys are in bed. It says, eat me. Be mine. Say all the sensual pleasures of the world, food among them. Be mine. Satisfy your appetites, be they for food or for relaxation or for 
drugs or for whatever, satisfy your appetites. Be mine. Serve me. Make your life about me. There's a lot of Valentines delivered to us in the world. Be mine. Any number of things can call us away from ourselves, away from who we are. When that happens, we are, as Jeremiah puts it, we are like plants planted on a salt flat. You know what salt tends to do to plants, right? Around this time of the year, we're throwing salt all over the place, and in the spring, then we wonder why the flowers won't come up. Why are the shrubs dying? What's happening here? Well, we spent all winter throwing salt around, right? It doesn't do the plants any good. When we are servants to other masters, when we are servants to other things, when we hear that call of be mine and we answer with an enthusiastic, yes, I will make my life about power, or money, or influence, or status, or food, any of the things of the world. When we answer that call, we are like plants planted in salt flats. We wither. We don't connect ourselves to the life of the world. We don't connect ourselves to the life that, that gave life to us. There's another huge valentine sent to us, and that is Christ. Christ, the most beautiful Christmas present, but also the most wonderful valentine. Because God says to us, be mine. Be mine. Make me the center of your life, God says. Make me the most important thing there is. And trust me, God says, trust me. The other things will come. The other things will come. You are hungry and you want food. Don't think of the sensual pleasures of the earth first. Remember me. Remember me and you will be filled. You want power and status? You want honor in the world? Remember me. The world won't thank you for it. And it might look like you have been abandoned. Remember me, God says. And you will have honor indeed. A place with the angels. Are you poor? Remember me. Remember me and you will be wealthy. Jesus is speaking to people and saying things that are counterintuitive. How can the poor be happier than the wealthy? Because they have nothing but God to rely upon, and when you have nothing but God, you have everything. How can the hungry be happy? How can they be able to hunger is an awful thing to experience. When you are hungry, you know that it is God who is sustaining you. You have nothing else. Then you have everything. Now make no mistake, Jesus would also have us attempt to alleviate the worldly sufferings of our brothers and sisters. This is not you know, an excuse, well, he, he's starving to death, good for him. We are still called to alleviate earthly suffering, but it reminds us, it reminds us that it is on God whom we rely. And it is that great valentine of Jesus who says, be mine. Come to me. Believe in me. Put your trust and your hope in me. Because the goods of the world are transitory. They are temporary. God is eternal. God is the stream beside which we are planted and well watered and fed. God is the rich soil in which we root our lives and draw nourishment and draw life. We are connected up to the source of life itself. Be mine, God says. And so the question on the Sunday before Valentine's Day is, to whom do we give our heart? Who has our hearts? Where do we plant ourselves? Where do we root ourselves? In God, through Christ, in the Holy Spirit, we are rooted and well-nourished. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Susan, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this village of Glen Williams and for all of Halton Hills and for those who live here, for the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, men and women, that you will show your goodwill to all. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are poor, those who are outcast, those who are alone, those who are suffering. And we pray for those who minister to them, that you will be their help and their defense. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the souls of those who have died, remembering today Patricia. We pray for Vicky. Tony and all the family. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>